Today I want to look at a model for diseases, the most simple model out there. It's called the SIR model. And really, like I said, there's not any simpler way of modeling disease. And SIR is based on three letters, S, I, and R, which represent three different populations of people. S stands for susceptible people. These are people who haven't got the disease yet that you're modeling. They're susceptible to being transmitted it. There's I for infected. These are people that currently have the disease. And then finally, there's R for people who've recovered. In this model, this can be either be people who have died or people who have gotten better from the illness. But the point is that they can't get the illness again. So S, susceptible, I, infected, R is recovered. And the dynamics of this system is how many people go from susceptible to infected. In other words, how, how fast is the disease spreading and how fast do people go from I to R? which is how fast are people recovering from the diseases. And if you can set up the dynamics of that system, then you could solve it on a computer. And typically these system, the SIR system is a differential equation system. And so I want to spend a little bit of time um, deriving this. So um, looking for the uh, DJ in the house. Ah, there he is up in the uh, penthouse suite. Sir, I need you to start the derivation. Hope you're not feeling sick. Disease is coming. You ready? Greetings, sir. It's time to diagnose. Oh, shit, who's Who'd be getting ill and getting back on their toes? Infection rate, bruh, that's so easy, here's a jingle. Give me the that product model. of SNIs when the sick and that risk mingle. And who be getting better, want that DRDT? With more infected, yeah, also see more recovery. That's good, though. To finish the job so that the units agree, we tack on some constants of proportionality. Give me that simple infection model. Find the rates, get your differential equation. All right, folks, we have our SIR model. Uh, just going over it one more time. There's different rates between susceptible and infectious people. That's the rate at which the transition occurs. And same with infectious and recovered people. There's a specific rate at which this occurs. I've put all the constants within, in brackets. Beta over N is just a constant. Uh, DS, DT, S times I. The more people in S and the more people in I, the more infections, the bigger that product between those two numbers, you get more people getting infected. Uh, the number of infectious people, it's just the opposite sign here because everyone that becomes susceptible uh, they're going towards being affected rather than losing people. And you also, but the infectious people, they get healthy, unfortunately. Well, fortunately. <laughs> I don't know why I said unfortunately. It's very fortunate. And so you also have this rate at which you're losing people from the infectious category. Um, and then finally, we have recovered people. And that's just equal to the rate at which infectious people are recovering. Um... And so, let's get to it. We have our packages here. If you watched my previous video, you probably saw um, me using this ODE int function. It's a function for solving differential equations. And it's what we're gonna use here because what we have here is a disease model and the model is written in terms of differential equations. So like last time, the way that these differential equations work in Python, you have a function or you have these quantities, I'm going to call it A. It's a vector that contains S, I, and R. And the first thing we need to do before solving differential equations in Python is we write a function that takes an A and the time T and it returns dA dt, which is just a vector derivative of all these things here, ds dt, di dt, dr dt. That's how differential equations are always defined, by the way. Like this function we're writing in Python that's the normal way the differential equations are written. That's like dy dx equals y. You're writing dy dx in terms of the thing itself, y. 
or it might be dy dx equals y squared. The thing on the other hand side of the equation is written in terms of itself. Here we have a vector dA dt is written in terms of a itself. So let's define this function. It's going to take in a itself time. It's also going to have these parameters beta n and gamma. So let me write those as well. And uh, we'll just extract the components to make it easy. And we're going to return a vector of three components. Uh, the first thing we're going to return is ds dt, because that's the first component of da dt. So minus beta over n. Uh, not a period. Uh, the second thing is. Uh, And the third component of our vector is dr dt, which is just this gamma times i. Done. So this is essentially, we have a differential equation and we've defined it in terms of a Python function. There's a beauty there. You're used to writing down things by hand. This is writing a differential equation in terms of Python using object oriented programming. Uh, now we need to solve the equations. Now I used conditions here that sort of modeled the um, uh, virus, the coronavirus in Wuhan. Uh, so the parameters that sort of match that are gamma is uh, one tenth. The units are inverse days. N, which is the total number of people, is 1.1 times 10 to the 7. Uh, beta also has units of days inverse, and it's uh, 0 0.39. And then uh, the initial susceptible, infected, and recovered people. Uh, susceptible is like N minus I naught. I naught is 574. And so you know, n is the total number of people. So the initial susceptible is like a little bit less than total because there's a very few people who are infected and nobody's recovered to start. Um, that's sort of like the initial condition. Uh, so we need to solve this and we're going to use ODE int, which is what we used last time as well. So let's find the times we want to solve this for. I'm going to go um, 100 days. So if I show this 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, all the way up to 99 days. So, hey guys, it's just me from the future here. You're probably wondering why the array of times is in days and not something like seconds. Because we chose beta and gamma to have units of days inverse, it actually fixes the units for the times that we specify in the ODE solver. It's just a little tip. Necessary information. So we give it dA dt. That's like the differential equation itself. We're telling it, this is the differential equation I want you to solve. Uh, we have to give it the initial conditions too. Uh, those would be, let's define the conditions above first actually. So gamma is equal to 1 tenth. Uh, N is equal to 1.1 times 10 to the 7. Uh, beta is equal to 0 0.39 and let's uh, plug these in. So we need to make sure they match up with the way that I've defined the function. So it takes in beta, then gamma, then n. Um, uh, sorry, that's not initial conditions. Initial conditions is just uh, s naught, uh, s naught, i naught, and r naught is equal to, um, what do we have, n, uh, n, minus no n minus 574 574 this is the initial number of susceptible people the initial number of infected people and the initial recovered people so i can pass those in here uh, the times that we want to solve it for is times and now we pass the extra arguments because this uh differential equation has some additional parameters we pass the additional args argument inside um this ODE int function. So we tell it the differential equation. We tell it the initial conditions. Every differential equation needs initial conditions. Uh, we have the times and we're going to pass in beta. And I believe I go beta gamma n. Boom, easy. And we get our solution right away. Now, the way it packages this, uh, again, I went over this in the past video, but it gives these uh, arrays that are length three long. 
So this would give like your initial S, your initial I, your initial R, uh, then your next S, your next I, your next R. But it's not packaged in a way that's easy to plot. We want to have like all the first column, just plot the first column, plot the second column, which is the I's and the third column, which is the R's. So we can transpose this to turn the columns into the rows. And now it'll give us uh, three different arrays. This is R, this is I, this is S, and we can extract them. So S is the first element. <coughs> and then we have uh, also I and R. Boom. And now we can plot them. And we can see how exactly the um, infection proceeds. So the blue is the number of susceptible people. Initially, there's quite a few. And by the end, uh, I'm going to add a grid here. You can see that it doesn't quite approach this zero line here, right? We're not quite at that point. So there was a lot of people that were susceptible. It basically means that not everybody got infected. Most people here got infected, but not everybody got infected. Uh, in terms of the infections, that's the orange curve here. So you start to see a peak in infections, and there's going to be a point at which there's maximum infections, and then they start to die down. And then recovery, well, people who get infected also recover. And so the green curve is how many people got the infection and then recovered. And the blue is how many people never got the infection. So a few people never got the infection. Most did and recovered. By the way, in this model, recovered means either you get physically healthy or you die. So it just means you no longer have the disease anymore. Um, everybody who gets the disease recovers in one way. Uh, and then the infections, the total number of infection people eventually dies down. Now, this isn't technically what happened in the virus because what happens is... Um, and it, you start implementing um, policies like social distancing or whatever. And then the rate at which people get infected uh, here goes down quite a bit substantially. So, that, you know, if you implement certain things, then you can lower this rate. Uh, here's a little bonus question. Um, this is a little more complicated, but I think it's a fun little coding problem. Well, if you got this far, thank you for making it through the video. Uh, as for the bonus question, you can sort of rewind a few frames and look at that and try to solve it yourself. I'll try to give these sort of bonus questions in these videos so that you can kind of expand on uh, the stuff that we covered. Anyways, uh, if you like these videos, please like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.